Hi, everyone. Please raise your hand if you have a question for Coach. Rebecca Harlow, Admission Network. Hey, Coach. Yeah, if you could just bring us up to speed on your injuries um, with Derek Emanuel, uh, if there's anything on Mitch, et cetera. Yeah, the, um, they're all making progress. Uh, uh, Derek's still in the, you know, the, with, has the health and safety protocol stuff going on. So that's a step-by-step -step process. Uh, Mitch has done more and more. We'll see where he is tomorrow. Uh, same with Alfred and, and Quick. So, uh, but they're making steady progress. Mark Berman, New York Post. Uh, yeah, with Mitchell, uh, is he able to scrimmage uh, fully? And, uh, you know, how close do you think he's getting to playing in a game? He's getting close. He's been cleared, so he's, he's, he's done more. Um, so, we want to see how he responds after the contact and, you know, the conditioning piece is important as well. So, uh, but he's, he's been cleared from a physical standpoint. Mike Borkanoff. Hey, Tom, uh, you, you've mentioned a bunch about when uh, referencing when your point guards are out, how the offense runs through Julius kind of regardless. Um, what can you do with this offense when it runs through the power forward, the nominal power forward position, as opposed to if it was kind of maybe a little more guard oriented. Yeah, I think Mike, you see him more and more of it, like the five out type offense and always felt like the hardest breaks to stop were the ones in which the, your power forward rebounded the ball or a big rebound on the ball and was able to bust out with that. Uh, I had Noah in Chicago who, who had done that very effectively for us and Tim Duncan over the years, he, he had done it as well. So, uh, but I think those are the hardest breaks to get matched up in. And because of Julius's ability, his unselfishness, to, uh, oftentimes you can catch a team uh, cross-matched and you can find open shots in transition. So that's something that we want to continue to work on. And, uh, and it, it get, adds a lot of versatility uh, to the group. And, and as I mentioned before, the, we're shooting the three at a pretty effective percentage. And that's something that we worked at hard at in the uh, we're also trying to create more of those opportunities. Rebecca Harlow. Coach, after the Philly game five days ago, four days ago, whatever it was, Doc said that he felt like that was a really good win for his team. He described it as a playoff type of game for him, just in terms of the physicality and, you know, slowing it, slowing it down, kind of duking it out. Did you look at it? at it that way and now playing them again so closely is there kind of something that you can teach your guys in regards to that well you try to take something from every game and so uh and i think we probably have seen more of that sort of you know the situation in which you're playing the same opponent you know in close proximity to the previous time so whether it's the you know a home and home or you know where there's a game in between it's it's similar to a playoff situation where it's the same opponent seven times. So, you know, you, you can take from that. And obviously they're going to be familiar with everything that you're doing. You're familiar with what they're doing. Um, and I think every time we have an opportunity to go against a team like that, we learn a lot. And so, and we know there's a lot of room for us to improve and there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, I like the resiliency of our team uh, and the way guys are responding to the different challenges that we're facing. Steve Popper. Hey, Tom. With the, uh, the trade deadline only a couple days away, um, one, I guess, in being a different role than you were in Minnesota, how do you approach it? And, and also, with some of the guys you have on expiring contracts or veterans, do you need to talk to guys like that about you know, the situations that they might be interested in them, or do you ignore it? Yeah, well, one, that would be a Leon question. <laughs> no, but... Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, it's that, this, it's that time of the year where a million things get talked about. And oftentimes it's, you know, everything gets talked about and nothing happens. And I think with social media and all the attention with everything going on, I think our, the players get used to that type of stuff. Uh, but it's hard on them too. You just got to stay focused. And that's why it's so important at the beginning of the season to uh, to establish your routine 
and to stick with it, to don't allow anything to creep in and distract you. And so control the things you can control and just concentrate on the improvement. I love our team and, you know, Leon and Wes and, and Scott, they have a job to do. Uh, and at the end of the day, if something can make the team better, then we'll consider it. If not, you know, we love the guys that we have. Jeff Bondi. Hey, Tom, um, if, if when, when and if um, Mitchell comes back, uh, do you put him right back in the starting lineup or do you keep um, Nerlens there? Yeah, you know, I, I really, I want to see how that goes. Uh, and there's, you know, great versatility there, but eventually, you know, he'll, he'll get back to starting, whether that happens right away or down the road. Uh, but I'm comfortable with both guys in that role. And I'm, really comfortable with Taj as well. So that gives us great depth at that position. Mike Borkanoff. Uh, <clears throat> although I think I may know your answer or deflection at least, but um, is with the trade deadline, are the playoffs the end game for you guys this year? Like that's the goal. And is that what you want to do in terms of um, roster management or are you comfortable playing for the future and the bigger picture? Uh, yeah, no, I think it's important for us to go step by step, you know, and not to skip over things. And, you know, the whole goal this year was to build the foundation, establish, you know, the right type of habits. Uh, and wherever that leads us, it leads us. Uh, and, and I like the way our players have responded. So uh, I think in this league, you, you always look at you know, player development first. That, that's your, your team. And then you look at the draft and you look at free agency and then you look at trades. And so all four ways, you, it's not, you never stop working in all four areas. Uh, and then every day you're thinking about how can we make the team better? And that's where our focus lies with, with, with coaches, front office, and our players. You know, we're, we're all tied together um, and we want to put the team first. Everyone's willing to sacrifice for the team and we're going to do what's best for, for the Knicks. Steve Popper. I was off there, but uh, but but I'll take this opportunity. Um, can you explain at all? Uh, I, I know it's very sensitive stuff, but the the Derrick Rose situation that I know he was with you guys is is he still got to build back up to conditioning, or is that something you could talk about? Yeah, it's just, it's just following the league protocols, and there's a number of steps that he has to go through, and we're going day by day. And they clear us along, obviously, with our own medical staff. Then he'll be ready to go, but it's uh, it's all the, the league health and safety protocols we're just following, and I think every team is going through the same thing. Thank you, Coach. Yep, thank you. Rebecca Harlow, MSG Network. RJ, Doc Rivers described the game against the Sixers the other night as a playoff type feeling game, just with the intensity, the physicality. Would you describe it in the same way? How good is that for you guys? And, and what's it going to take to get over the hump there? I mean, it's a great test for us. Uh, just like he said, actually, very physical game, you know, tough game. We got to scrap and fight for everything. But, you know, you know, like I said, we, we compete. We compete. So, uh, you know, we'll be all right. Mark Berman, New York Post. Uh, yeah, RJ, how is... Uh... Mitchell Robinson looked back at practice, and what do you? What are the things that you you guys have missed not having him? He looked good, man. You know, just just to have him out there on the court. You know, with, with everybody going through, you know, the drills going through practice. Just you know, let's let's everybody spirit up, and uh, you know, hope to have him back real soon. Rebecca Harlan. RJ. Just kind of more on, you know, the, the spirits of this team. I and mean, can you just describe sort of how you guys are feeling at this point? I mean, coming off of a win in which you had so many different guys step up without the guards, et cetera, kind of starting to get some of your guys back here. Where, where is this group right now? Uh, I got, you know, just got to continue with the next man up mindset until everybody's back. You know, um, we're feeling confident always. Um, we just gotta, just gotta try to go out there and outwork other teams. We have enough to win, uh, you know, just like just like we did against the Magic. I think you know we could do that every night. 
Mark Berman. Yeah, I mean, not having Derek also uh, for a long while, uh, now he's back with the club. Uh, what could you tell us about how he's doing? Uh, with D-Roll, it's kind of kind of same thing as Mitch, you know, just puts everybody speared up. Uh, I know during the games, he, he's talking, you know, and he's still, he's still leading, he's still teaching out there. Um, he helps me a lot uh, too. So, you know, just having, just having guys, you know, be back around the team and just be able to be vocal and communicate and, and help each other out is a, is a big help. Steph Bondi. Uh, with, with Mitch, what are some of the things you guys missed without? I mean, I know Nerlens kind of does the same thing, but what are some of the kind of things you missed with him off the court, not being on the court? Uh, I mean, he catches so many lobs, there's so many rebounds, blocks so many shots. I mean, you know, he's very athletic, makes some some crazy plays out there. Uh, we just, you know, we miss his presence. He has a presence down there when, when people go in there. I'm going to say Monero, they don't really want to finish over him. So, you know, we, we definitely, definitely miss that. Amanda Hajar, Next Digital. Hey, RJ. Obviously, every win's important in this league, but but how important, especially are those close wins, especially coming down the stretch, grinding out the second half of the season, just to be able to to, to squeeze out those close wins, how important is it? Well, those, are, those are big time. You know, uh, at the end of the game, we've got to try to do, try to do our best to close out those those tough games and, you know, every game, every game matters, every game counts. And uh, we're just gonna try to keep fighting for everything. Thank you, RJ. Okay. Rebecca Harlow, MSG Network. Hey Taj, after the Philly game the other night, Doc Rivers described the game as like a playoff type of game, given the physicality and the pace. The fact that you guys are trying to get into the playoffs, you know what that feels like. How good is it for this team to be playing at that level, going up against another team within such a short amount of time? Well, I think it's good for our team. Um, this is a good learning tool for our team, understanding the circumstances that we're in. You know what I'm saying? You understand that we got a lot of guys banged up. Uh, we just got that next man mentality, but just understanding how the next guy on the team is just stepping up, understanding the circumstances of how physical the game is going to be and what we're playing for. And uh, we're just a real tightened up group. And uh, we understand every game is a process of just getting better and, um, and learning from our mistakes. Mark Berman, New York Post. Hey, Taj, uh, you've been sort of Mitchell Robinson's uh, mentor. And uh, how has it been for him, you know, not being able to play for a long time? And do you feel that uh, he's on the verge? I think he's been in tune. I think uh, for the most part, he's just been uh, coming in every day, watching film, staying locked in. But every day he's on the court with us. Even when he had his cast on, he was still working out with us. He was still running the plays with us. So. Uh, it's just good to have him back. Good to have him back around the guys, especially in practice. I'm going up and down, but um, I think his mind's been on point. Understand the pretty is where we're trying to go. Amanda Hajar, Next Digital. Hey Taj, uh, obviously every win's important, but but as a veteran in this league, that you know you know what it takes to win and how important each game is. Just how important are the close wins? Uh, just being able to grind it out, both for team morale and, and obviously in the standings. It's always win is a win, no matter how 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 you get in the NBA. Everybody in the NBA is talented. Everybody's uh, physically gifted. So uh, anytime you get a one up on a, on a team on a player, it's always a plus. And uh, you're gonna have games like that. It's gonna be nights nice that you can don't shoot the ball well. Nights nice that you have guys hurt, banged up. Uh, you have to just do what you have to do. Everybody has the same rough schedule. Everybody's going through different injuries. Uh, we're just a young team that's learning how to win games and scratching corn, and do whatever we have to do to win the game. Amanda Hajar, Next Digital. Taj, you guys have had the, the next man up mentality. Uh, just, just talk about the grit of the team, everybody from, from top to bottom especially with Mitch out and a couple key guys out, just been, being able to grind out wins and, and stay motivated. 
Well, we got talent. We got a lot of talent on the team. It's just an account. It's just a. Uh, it comes down to when everybody gets a chance to get out there and uh, show their talent. But right now, uh, everybody's in different positions. Everybody's running around. But um, our team is just focused on helping the next guy. But we never know who's going to be out, who's going to step up. But that's the uh, so great about our team because everybody puts in the work every get every night every. Every day you can count on guys staying late after the practice, even guys coming in late at night getting shot. So that's just it's a testament to this team. Rebecca Harlow. Taj, you know, you've had a couple of months to be back and, and catching your groove with Tibbs and this team, but you know, all we hear is about how close this group is, how much fun you guys are having playing for each other. Do you ever have any of those sort of surreal moments where it kind of takes you back to some of those? Close knit teams with Tids with the Bulls, kind of that first time around. Like, what has this been like for you? It's the same. I, honestly, it's like the same same feeling. Uh, real, com, real, real family. Uh, every day, everybody's always smiling. Everybody's always eager to get better. If one guy slacks, every everybody's on top of them. Everybody's constantly trying to critique and help everybody out. But even after the game is over, everybody's laughing. Everybody's joking. But uh, in good intentions. Um, but it's rare in this league when you got a whole group of young guys that understand what we have to do. But even better is understand that we need each other. And I think that's what's happening with the group. And uh, we're just having fun. And uh, every day is something special. Um, Thank you, Taj. Thank you.